Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Framework Laptop, which is a premium, thin and light notebook with a 13.5 inch display. This is the second generation model with a 12th generation Intel Core processor that Framework loaned me for testing purposes. And by far the coolest things about this is that it is a modular, repairable, customizable and upgradable laptop. A bunch of words that you don't normally get with thin and light notebooks. Um, but none of that really matters so much if it's also not a good laptop. And so that's really what I'm going to focus on here. I have another video that delves into the modularity and the repairability and the upgradability. And I'll touch on that in a moment here. But here, I really wanted to focus on whether it's worth the money. And uh, generally speaking, I would say that the answer is yes, but I'll get into some more details. So first, let's take a quick look at the notebook. It does have this 13.5 inch 2256 uh, by 1504 pixel display. That's a three by two aspect ratio. That is about 200 pixels per inch, it's pretty sharp. And so I actually find that uh, instead of using the default screen scaling of 100% or 200%, 150% allows me to sort of get a lot of content on the screen, but also make everything look big and uh, not tiny. Um, the keyboard is this backlit with multiple levels of brightness, uh, chiclet style keyboard, which is really pretty nice. And this touchpad is a nice large Windows precision touchpad. Uh, we've got webcam and speakers up here. We'll get into those privacy switches in a moment. And normally this is where I would show you around the ports of a laptop. But what's really interesting here is that these ports are all customizable and swappable. So there's a uh, headphone jack is on all models, but otherwise there's four ports that you can choose which ports you want when you purchase it. And if you want more than four ports, you can buy more than four and just sort of swap them out on the fly. So for instance, you can see I've got a USB Type-C port here and an HDMI port, but what if I wanted HDMI and DisplayPort? All I need to do is press this little button here. Uh, it's a little hard to do this on camera, but press the button and just sort of drag that out. And then I can take this DisplayPort expansion card and slide it in. And now we've got two video outputs here. Um, so as you can sort of see here, they're all basically connecting to a USB 4 connector. And, um, you know, uh, you can have four USB ports, HDMI, Display Port, USB Type-A. And there's even the possibility that there might be additional ports in the future. So this is the second generation framework laptop with a 12th generation Intel Core processor. The original framework laptop that shipped in 2021 had an 11th generation processor and a certain number of ports that were available. New expansion card module that's available starting with this new, uh, shipping at the same time as this new model is this ethernet adapter. Now it's a little bit clunkier than some of the others. It uh, doesn't quite fit inside and will jut out from the side. So you can see it's got a little bit of a different design, but now you do have an option for a wired internet connection without an external dongle. You just slide this into one of those slots because it's really uh, designed that way. And this is one of the most requested optional expansion modules. Um, so Framework decided to build one. And it's possible that if there are other ports that people are really looking for in the future, that those could uh, come to be or you can design your own because the specification is out there and framework really allows anybody who wants to develop their own expansion cards to do so. Now I mentioned not just modularity here, so it's not just that you can choose which four ports you want, but there's also upgradability. And so the framework laptop came with this uh, tool, which has a screwdriver on one end. It's a Torx screwdriver that's compatible with all the screws on the outside and inside of this laptop and then a prying tool on the other side. So basically to open it up, you would just loosen these screws. You don't even have to take them all the way out. You just loosen them and they stay in place so they're hard to lose. And then you pry open the laptop, get on the insides. And then in addition to being able to replace the memory, the storage, uh, as you often can on laptops, not always, but sometimes, you can replace the wireless card, the battery, the speakers, and you can order replacement parts for all of those things from Framework, even the entire main board with the processor. So as I mentioned, the first generation framework laptop shipped with an 11th generation processor. This has a 12th generation. If you already have last year's model, you can just buy the new main board, swap it out, and basically turn a first generation framework laptop into a second generation. Now, I'm not sure that it makes a ton of sense to go one generation up if you're going to do that, but Framework has now delivered a generational improvement. And if this startup company manages to stick around a few more years, it's possible that if you buy a version with a 12th generation processor, you might be able to upgrade to a 15th or a 16th generation. 
So instead of buying a whole new laptop, getting a new keyboard, mouse, uh, touchpad display uh, that you don't need, you can just pay for the mainboard upgrade, which is going to be less expensive in the long run. Uh, before we finish this tour of the parts, I guess I should show you the charger that uh, was supplied in the version that I ordered or that was sent to me. Um, um, this is a 60 watt USB adapter and um, it's not the smallest. I mean, you can see that the charger itself is kind of small, but we've got, you know, this power adapter card and then we've got the uh, charging adapter. But if you didn't want to use this, you could use a different one. So Framework offers a bunch of different ways to buy its laptops. You can get a fully pre-configured system that has a Core i5 or a Core i7 processor, a certain amount of memory and storage and Windows pre-installed, or you can get a DIY kit, which is what Framework sent me. And if you do that, you can get a version with no memory, no operating system, no storage, and no power adapter. So you can just apply any uh, compatible USB Type-C power adapter. Uh, I think if it basically it does USB power delivery at 45 watts or more, it should work because I was able to plug in a USB power bank and charge the laptop. Might not be quite as good as 60 watts, but 45 watts should work to charge it a little bit more slowly. So that is a quick overview of the modular, repairable, customizable uh, options. Let's take a look at using it. Uh, so you can see I've got a fingerprint sensor there. Uh, works pretty well. It's built right into the power button. Um, we've got display, which is not only very sharp, but also supports a pretty decent range of brightness options. So it gets up to 400 nits brightness, which might not be as bright as the brightest screens out there, but you can see it gets really dim, which is probably going to come in handy if you're in a darker environment. Uh, when it's pretty bright, I'm going to point it at my window so you can see there's glare. Um, and if I dim it, it almost turns into a mirror, right? So brightening, it does help with, uh, with visibility. Uh, it's a slightly recessed screen. It's not edge-to-edge -edge glass. It's not a touchscreen display, but it does have a hinge that goes to about 180 degrees. So if you really wanted to, you know, sort of hold it like this, um, or if you wanted to set it down flat on a table, that it, those are things that you could do um, as well. Uh, as I mentioned, in terms of sort of display resolution, if we... Um, caps lock is on there. Wanted to adjust... At 100% scaling, uh, for my money, everything is just a little hard to see on the screen right now. But at 150, it works pretty nicely and you get a lot of content. So again, like uh, let's just open up a little pewting here and you can see what it looks like at 150 versus 100. Just a little too small for my tastes. Uh, but 200, which it says is recommended, is a little bit too large. Although, you know, for, for some people, this might actually be a good fit. Um, so it's nice to have the high-res display, but I think you might have to sort of futz around a little bit to find out exactly what is the most convenient way for you to use that. Um, the version that I'm testing shipped with an Intel Core i7 1260p processor, which is an Alder Lake 28-watt uh, chip. Pretty fast, and in terms of performance benchmarks, you can see I ran PC Mark and 3D Mark and a bunch of other things. You can check out the results at lilliputing.com. In a nutshell, I found that it is definitely one of the fastest computers that I've tested, um, which is un unsurprising. It's got a reasonably fast processor. It does take a toll on battery life a little bit. I found that uh, in terms of general use, day-to-day uh, -day using this as my work machine to blog, basically streaming music while researching, writing articles using Google Chrome with maybe a dozen or two dozen browser tabs open. I only got around four or five hours of battery life, which is a little bit underwhelming. Um, I would have expected to get more. And one of the things about buying a laptop is that you, you know that the battery life you get on day one is not the battery life that you'll get on day 720. So again, the fact that the battery and everything else in here is user replaceable and can be purchased as a spare part from framework is nice. Uh, it'd be even nicer if they got better battery life. But I'm also wondering to what degree some of these things might be uh, in need of optimization. Intel's Alder Lake processors are still relatively new. Uh, because I was shipped this uh, DIY version of the laptop, I installed Windows myself and installed a driver package provided by Framework. Uh, it's possible that some driver updates might be able to help improve battery life in the long run. Uh, battery life is longer when you're doing less resource intensive tasks, when you maybe dim the screen a little bit more and you do things like streaming video, you might get a couple more hours than I did. 
but it's not the best battery life I've seen. Uh, 55 watt hour battery is included. And again, with a 60 watt uh, uh, charger, it doesn't take that long to fully recharge the battery. I'd say maybe an hour, uh, two hours tops. The version that was sent to me, again, it was a DIY version. And so Framework sent it to me with two eight gig sticks of RAM and a 500 uh, gigabyte SSD, which is blazing fast. Um, those are also available if you buy the pre-configured model, or you can supply your own if you'd rather do that. And it has a uh, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, both of which seem to work really nicely. The camera is not, you know, amazing, but it is a two megapixel camera, I believe, that, um, works reasonably well. And so I can say hello, I can do video chats, the screen wobbles a little bit, so you might want to let it settle down there. But one of the things that's really nice here is not only are there privacy shutters that can cover the camera, they actually disconnect the camera. So you'll see it didn't just go to a black screen when I slid that over there, it disconnected the camera and it says, can't even find the camera. So that's kind of a nice privacy feature to have. And I've confirmed that it also works if you're running Ubuntu Linux, uh, because it literally just disconnects the camera. It's like unplugging it from the USB port. Um, so the operating system is just unaware that a camera is installed in the first place. So uh, we've got a little bit of a privacy feature there. And um, I guess one other thing I should mention is you see this nice black bezel around the display? Uh, that's, that can also be changed. Uh, again, with the customization, you can purchase a spare uh, or a, a different color bezel and change the look so that it would be silver or orange or, or something else. So um, let's see, what else have I not done? I guess I haven't really shown too much of the keyboard. So... Uh, well, let's just do a, whoop. let's open notepad, just do a little bit of typing. This is what it is like to type on the framework laptop keyboard. Uh, so overall, I find it really comfortable. I have no problem typing pretty much at full speed on here. Uh, it's uh, well spaced, well laid out. Um, the function keys at the top include media playback buttons, which I really like. And by default, they're set up so that, you know, just press it. You don't have to press F1 or F2 or anything, uh, or the function key. You just press the volume buttons, the screen brightness buttons, the airplane mode button, and so forth. If you'd like to flip that so that by default, pressing this is F1, F2, F3, you can do that pretty easily by going into the uh, UEFI settings. And all you need to do there is um, reboot the computer and hit F2 during startup and it'll take you into the advanced settings where you can do things like flip the functions of the top row of keyboards so that now you would have to hold the function key to adjust the volume or the screen brightness. You can also change the boot order. You can boot from a USB flash drive uh, if you wanted to do install Linux. You can um, also disable some of the features of Intel's processors. So one of the things that makes the 12th generation processor family interesting is that it is um, a dual or a hybrid layout with energy efficient cores combined with performance cores. And you can actually disable some or all of either of those processor cores, depending on how you want to do it. So lots of different settings options in the uh, UEFI setup uh, utility. Um, one thing that uh, just takes a little bit of getting used to, and I think might be a sort of personal preference, is I do a lot of work on a laptop like this, where I'd have one window open on the left, one window open the on the right. So um, you know, for instance, if I were researching and writing an article, I might be, you know, looking up information on the internet in one window and then writing in the other. And at 150% screen scaling, you might notice here, it changes the layout of certain websites. So at full screen, this is what Lilliputing looks like. And you can see the sidebar and you can see all the content. But when I do it half screen, I'm missing a few things. And that's because of the aspect ratio here. It's a three, point, uh, three by two aspect ratio display. And it's just a little harder to fit everything in there unless I were to go down to 125 or lower. And now I sort of get the full screen there. So if you're used to a 16 by 10 or a 16 by nine display, going to 3.2, uh, three by two can be a little bit different. Uh, it takes a little getting used to. And I, I have to say, it encouraged me to do more stuff in full screen mode or more of a tiled mode where maybe, um, you know, I would just flip back and forth between different applications, um, you know, using keyboard shortcuts like 
the uh, three fingers up to switch screens um, because things do really look pretty good at 150% scaling in full screen mode, I find, but um, that sort of partial screen is a little bit trickier. So anyways, that's just a personal preference kind of thing. Overall, um, I really do think it's a pretty nice laptop. Now, again, it's not uh, super cheap. Prices started about 819 for a bare bones DIY kit with no memory storage or operating system. And um, they're, they're you know, uh, higher than that if you wanted to get a version with uh, all of those things. So actually, let's take a look at the pricing. You can find more details at lilliputing.com or at frame.work, which is the uh, official website for this. But it's uh, a little hard to remember all of the pricing, right? Pricing starts at 1049 for a 12th generation fully configured model or 819 for a DIY edition version. And that is not super low, especially when you consider that that starting price is for a model that has a Core i5-1240p processor, just 8 gigs of RAM, and 256 gigs of storage. Um, and it goes up pretty substantially if you want more than that. So it's 1449 for a version with a Core i7-1260p, 16 gigs, and 512. And that's similar to the version that I've got here. This version would actually cost a little bit more because of all the expansion modules that uh, were included. And so is it worth that price? I think in terms of general performance, if it weren't for the battery life, um, I would have no problem definitely recommending it. And again, I'm hopeful that battery life could get better over time as the software is optimized a little bit better. But I think um, what the real promise is, is that you might spend a little bit more on this laptop up front than you might on other laptops. But if Framework does manage to succeed in delivering upgrades throughout the years, then in the long run, you might be able to upgrade without actually having to um, spend money on an entirely new machine. And as I mentioned, they've already done one generational upgrade. So it's possible that uh, if the company does stick around a few more years, that might be an option in the future. So you can see here, you can buy a Core i5 11th generation processor uh, and mainboard for just $399, um, 549 for a Core i7 1165G7, and if you had the previous generation model and you wanted to upgrade, uh, prices start at $449 for a 12th generation Core i5 or $699 for a 12th generation Core i7 processor. And so I think um, the, the promise of being able to pay up front for $1499, say, for a configuration similar to this version and know that in a few years you might be able to spend $500 or $600 or $700 and upgrade the internals while keeping a pretty great keyboard, laptop, uh, display, uh, modularity, and know that everything is repairable. So if anything wears down and needs replacing, including a broken screen, you can get all of those replacement parts. Um, so I really like what Framework is doing here. And I do think that generally speaking, they've delivered on their promise. And I hope that they continue to deliver on the promise for years to come. It's a little bit weird, you know, recommending long-term thinking when it comes to a company that is a startup, but based on what they've delivered so far, uh, it's, it's really promising. So that is a look at the framework laptop, modular, repairable, upgradable, and overall pretty decent laptop uh, that is available now for 819 and up for the DIY editions or 1049 and up for a uh, fully configured system. Or you could buy the previous generation version with a 11th generation processor and save a few bucks because they're on sale uh, as of the time that I'm recording this video. So this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing. Again, you can find benchmark results, other uh, more detailed information at lilliputing.com. On our YouTube channel, there's also a video that takes a look at Ubuntu Linux running on this system. It's really, really easy to get up and running, and most things work out of the box. And another video that dives a little bit more into the repairability and modularity. So uh, thanks for watching. Check it out at lilliputing.com and more information at frame.work as well.